that one. So example seven. So you'll notice here the difference between this and the ones we've been doing is you do have a product rule going on. If you'll notice, we have an x squared, and that is being multiplied by a 1 minus x squared to the 1 half power, pretty much, or square root, right? So we have two functions that are being multiplied together. And so if I were to rewrite this, I have this x squared, and I'm going to rewrite it to this 1 minus x squared to the 1 half, all right? So I technically have an f times a g, so I need to do the product rule. But within the product rule, my g is going to require the chain rule, okay? So if you remember the product rule, you have the derivative of the first times the second plus the first derivative of the second, right? And so what I typically do here is I figure out what those derivatives, when it's a complicated derivative within it, I actually figure those derivatives out first, so then I just have to plop them in there and simplify, okay? Um, so, like, the first one's not really difficult. So if I did the derivative of f, say, let's say this is f right here, that's just going to be 2x. That's an easy derivative, right? But then g is a little more complicated here, right? So if I do the derivative of g of x, I'm going to multiply by that 1 half. I'm going to have 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. And then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside, negative 2x. So that's a much more complicated derivative, right? Um, now, I will say, <clears throat> I don't know. I would simplify the negative 2x and the 1 half, but I would actually leave that 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half just like that for the sake of multiplication, because then I'm going to multiply like bases and use my properties of exponents here. So I would not put it in denominator form is what I'm saying here at this point. I would simplify these pieces of it. So negative 2x and positive 1 half is just negative x. So you get negative x, 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. That would be my derivative of that particular piece. Make sense? Okay, so <clears throat> then I'm going to plug it into my product rule. So my product rule says derivative of the first. Well, that's just 2x times the second. Well, the second, I'm going to write in exponential form 1 minus x squared to the 1 half, all right? Plus the first, well, that's just x squared times the derivative of the second. That's negative x, 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half, all right? So far, so good. Okay. So I will simplify this piece of it as much as possible here. Um, and I will um, go ahead and multiply these two, right? So I have 2x, 1 minus x squared to the 1 half, minus x cubed, 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. Now, here's a little finagling people don't usually think about. Do those two groups have anything in common? Yeah, the 1 minus x squared. When I factor out a common term, I use it to the lowest power. I pull out the lowest power, okay? What is the lowest power of those two? Yeah, the negative 1 half. So I'm actually going to pull the 1 minus x squared out, and I'm going to pull the lowest power out, negative 1 half. Okay? Now, what that does here, I have this 2x. When I say pull out, I divide. When I say divide, I subtract my exponents, right? So I have 1 half minus a negative 1 half. It's just 1, right? So I end up with just 1 minus x squared here. Minus, I have that x cubed. I pulled the entire thing out. So it's gone, right? It's like if I had an x squared and I pulled out an x squared, right? He, he's gone. All right, so I have that. <clears throat> now, at this point, I'm going to use my property of exponent that that is a negative. What, where should that negative go if it's at the top here? Yes, yeah, it's going to go at the top. So this, I'm going to move the denominator. All right, so I'm going to move this to the denominator, 1 minus x squared to the 1 half down here. 
And then I'm just gonna simplify this guy. So I have two x times one, two x times negative x squared, um, and then a negative, oh, that's x cubed, sorry. Then a negative x cubed. It should be a two, I wrote, I wrote them in the wrong places here. That should be a two, and that should be a three. All right, so far so good. Um, what else can I simplify up there? Right, so I have 2x minus 3x cubed <clears throat> all over 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. And I think they pulled an x out, but you don't. I mean, it doesn't help you to pull an x out. Mm -hmm. They have like x on the outside, 2 minus 3x squared on the inside. That... If I could simplify the denominator by an x, I would do that, but I, I can't. So doing that factoring didn't really help me, so you can just leave it like this. It's fine. Everybody see that? So you're, you're applying two rules here. You're applying the product rule, and within the product rule, you have to use the chain rule for one of those derivatives. Right, so as you can see, we're getting more complicated with them. Um, and <clears throat> this is going to do the same thing. This is going to do the quotient rule and the um, chain rule. So my numerator, my denominator here. So then if I want the derivative up at the top, that's just a one. If I want the derivative of the bottom, that's a little more complicated. <clears throat> so I would rewrite this guy to be x squared plus four to the one third. Then that would leave a deriv derivative of one third, x squared plus four to the negative two thirds times the derivative of the inside, which is two x. I do wanna simplify this, right? So I do have um, two thirds x, x squared plus four to the negative two thirds. All right, and then I'm gonna use my um, quotient rule here. So quotient rule says the derivative of the first, well, that's just one times the second. Well, that's x squared plus four to the one third. All right, minus the first derivative of the second all over the bottom squared. Remember when you square a, um, a function that already has a exponent, you multiply. So you're gonna say one third times two. So this is actually gonna be raised to the two thirds as well. Okay. Wait, say that again. So uh, this is the denominator squared. 
The denominator is x squared plus 4 to the 1 third. So I did 1 third squared, which you just multiply 1 third and 2. You get 2 thirds. I can write it out. So it looks like this. All right, so I take my denominator, x squared plus 4 to the 1 third, and take that and square it. So it's to the 2 thirds. Okay. Now, there's a couple things here going on. <clears throat> I would actually, um, I would pull out some stuff on top first, and then I would <clears throat> go from there. So, like, um, I would take my lowest one out, which is this guy here. So I would pull out in the numerator, I would pull out this x squared plus 4 to the negative 2 thirds, okay? Okay, I'm just dealing with my numerator right now. If I divide this one by 2 thirds, then I'm saying, by negative 2 thirds, I'm saying 1 third minus a negative 2 thirds. It's just 1, right? So here, I just have my x squared plus 4 to the first power. Right, to the first power. That's all it is. And you, actually, I'm not even going to put that first. Y'all, y'all, y'all have got that, right? All right, minus. I'm going to deal with my x squareds, all right? So I have x squared. I have took out that completely. Let's talk about that two-thirds, okay? Um, I, technically, I have a one here. And if, I, if I'm talking common denominator, I have a three over three. Okay, does everybody agree that I didn't do anything by writing three over three there? I'm trying to get rid of that denominator is what I'm trying to do. <clears throat> and so I would actually pull a one third out, okay? So I would pull a one third out with this guy to get rid of that crazy fraction over there, okay? <clears throat> Hear me out. <laughs> If I take a one-third out of this guy, what do I have left? No, not, we're not subtracting. We're dividing. Three-thirds divided by one-third is times three. I just have three. Okay? So I have three, three over three. I divide it by one-third. <clears throat> You're left with just three. Okay? So here I have a three. Right? If I take that same one-third out of here, right, I have two-thirds divided by one-third. What am I left with there? What's going to be in front of my x squared? A two, right? And so do you see what I did by pulling that denominator out? It helps me because then I can put that three on bottom. I can't just put that three on bottom when it's only in part of my answer. So I couldn't just pull the three to the bottom here because then I didn't actually pull it out of this guy. You end up multiplying the guy that doesn't have a fraction by the denominator when you pull a denominator down. That's what I'm trying to show you, all right? So I don't like this two-thirds being in the numerator. I have a complex fraction here, a fraction and a fraction, all right? I can't just take this three and put it on bottom because I didn't account for anything over here. In order to put the three on bottom, which is what I'm about to do, I must account for it here. It always, always works out that if this little guy does not have a fraction, you end up, the denominator becomes the coefficient. Because 3 over 3 is technically 1, and all I did was pull the denominator out. Once they have common denominators, I can just take the denominator and drop it to the bottom, and their numerators are what's left over. So once I had a common denominator here, I, I rewrote this 1 in front of my parentheses to be 3 over 3. Now we have common denominators between my groups. Now I can pull my denominator to the bottom, which is what I'm about to do here. I pulled that one-third out, and what was left were my numerators. My three was my coefficient here. My two was my coefficient here. Does everybody see that? Okay. That's what's always going to happen because one is just denominator over denominator. Okay. Now, if I had had a different number there already, let's say I'd had a whole number here, okay, I would have had to multiply that whole number by three. Let's say there had been a two in front of my x squared without a third, okay? This was a two and this was a two thirds. This would have become a six and this would have been a two in order to pull that three down, okay? You always end up multiplying by the denominator. 
it always becomes that coefficient, okay? I'm doing that because you're gonna have this random crazy one third left in your answer and it's not gonna be simplified. I mean, look at another problem. Well, all right, so let's move on. What was my denominator? Well, remember my denominator was x squared plus four to the two thirds, okay? Everybody agree with that? <clears throat> okay, so I now have like bases here, right? And he's pulled out, so I can simplify these guys, all right? How do I simplify like bases? What's my rules for exponents? What do I do with these guys when you're simplifying top to bottom? So if I have x, if it will let me write, x to the fourth over x to the sixth, what do I do with those? You subtract, so that becomes x to the negative 2, right? Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. Yes? So here I have negative 2 thirds minus 2 thirds. What is it? Negative 4 thirds. So where is he going to go, top or bottom? bottom. He's going to go on the bottom. So we have x squared plus 4 to the 4 thirds on bottom. All right? I just subtracted my exponents, negative 2 thirds minus 2 thirds. This guy can go on bottom, this 3 because he's a fraction, right? So it's technically three to the negative one is what it technically means. So I can put that three on the bottom, all right? And now I can simplify this guy, all right? So just distribute your three. We have three x squared plus 12 minus two x squared, all right? <clears throat> um, three x squared minus two x squared gives me x squared. just x squared. Mm -hmm. All right, so I have x squared plus 12 on the top. I have 3x squared plus 4 to the 4 thirds on the bottom. That is as simple as I can get him. So you'll notice the difference between these and the two prior examples. The two prior examples, the chain rule was within it, right? So a piece of my product required the chain rule. A piece of my quotient required the chain rule. Here, the chain rule piece is on the outside of the whole thing. So you're going to do the chain rule of the outside. Then you're going to multiply by the inside's derivative, which requires the quotient rule. Okay? <clears throat> so... 
it's kind of opposite of the way you think, uh, what we've been doing. So <clears throat> the chain rule piece is actually really easy. I'm gonna take this two, right? It's gonna be multiplied out in front. So I have two times this three X minus one over X squared plus three now to the first power, right? Everybody see it's to the first power? Because I subtracted one. That's the, the outside. I'm done with the outside. Now I need to do the derivative of the inside. <clears throat> and this is where you have to do the quotient rule, right? So I usually put brackets because this next guy is going to be a little big. So the derivative of my top is just a 3. The derivative of my bottom is a 2x. And now I'm going to do my quotient rule. The derivative of the top, that's 3, times the bottom, minus uh, the derivative of the bottom times the top. I'm going to do it just this way for distribution purposes, okay? All over the bottom squared. Okay? And then I'm going to simplify. So I have, I still have this guy in front. All right, um, I'm gonna simplify this top piece here. I have three X squared plus nine minus six X squared plus, don't, don't forget to distribute that negative, plus two X, all right? All of that is over X squared plus three quantity squared. Right, I'm gonna keep going. So I'm gonna say a two times this right here. What can I do up here? Yeah, I have three x squared, negative six x squared. So that's a negative three x squared. I have a positive two x and a positive nine all over x squared plus three. I'm multiplying fractions, so I literally just multiply my numerators and multiply my denominators. Here's the thing. I don't make you foil here. So you can literally just say, I mean, technically that's the numerator as well, right? So I have a 2 in the numerator, I have a 3x minus 1 in the numerator, and I have a negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 9 in the numerator. In the denominator, I have this to the first power, and technically, this is, there we go, that to the second power, so I have it to the third power, right? You're multiplying lock ba like bases. You're, you're actually done. You can't simplify that at all, um, really, at that point. Now, if for some reason you could simplify this, like by factoring, <clears throat> and it make a difference, you could do that and maybe simplify, but at this point, you're done. And you can leave it like that, because again, we're gonna move forward to find where is this zero, where is this undefined? So we're gonna move forward to where's the numerator zero, where's the denominator zero questions. So this is why I don't make you foil this out because to answer those questions, you need it factored, right? And so it's easier to just leave it that way for the pur this particular purpose.
All right, so, <clears throat> and I actually think you had one for homework. Trig functions can use the chain rule too. Typically, typically, not always, but typically the trig function is the outside function and something else is the inside function. But you can have the trig function as the inside function as well. These are three examples. I have an outside function that is a sine of something, and then I have an inside function that is 2x. So I would take the derivative of the outside function. Well, the derivative of sine is cosine, so I would rewrite it with a cosine of my 2x, and then I would need to multiply it by the derivative of that 2x, which is 2. Now, that is not multiplying by the 2x. That is multiplying the cosine. So it's going to be 2 cosine of 2x. With this next one, my outside is my cosine. So negative sine of x minus 1. And then derivative of the inside is just 1. So it doesn't change anything. My outside function is my tangent. So I have secant squared of 3x times the derivative of the inside, which is 3. So I would rewrite that with a 3 in front. All right. You have other things that happen with trig functions. Look at the, this example. Where the parentheses is matters, okay? So, <clears throat> and they've shown you how to rewrite these. We're on page 132. Cosine of 3x squared. The cosine is the outside here. The 3x squared is the inside. Here, however, <clears throat> like this, cosine of 3, um, that's an actual number. When it, if it was written like this, cosine of 3 is a number. You could put it into your calculator and get a number for it. It's, it's not, it doesn't require the product rule quotient. It, it's a coefficient. It's like having a 4 in front of your x squared, Okay. So you don't derive the cosine at all. You just derive the x squared piece, all right? Something like this, the cosine is still the outside, but that, x, that squared is applying only to the 3x. So that's like 9x squared, right? Here is where people get confused. This square is referring to the cosine. So the best way to rewrite these is to do the group, the cosine of x right here, and that two on the outside. So technically here, your trig function is the inside function. So you would do the two, you would leave the cosine alone, and then you would derive the cosine, derivative of the inside, all right? Same thing here. This square root, the cosine is the inside, which is more obvious here than here. You would write the whole thing to the one half power and do that derivative accordingly. So you have to pay attention to how it's being written as to which way you're going to do this, okay? This is my original function. Technically, I'm gonna do the chain rule twice here. It's chain, chain, okay? So if I were to rewrite this before I ever derive it, I'm going to say the sine of 4t to the third power, okay? So to get this derivative, I have to do the derivative of the outside. That's that three piece. So I'm gonna multiply by three. I'm gonna have the sine of four t to the second power, <clears throat> okay? Now I need to do the derivative of this guy, okay? I also have an outside and an inside here, right? My outside is my sine. So I have to do the derivative of sine, which is the cosine of 4t. But I'm not done, because I have to take the derivative then of the 4t, which is just 4, okay? And so my final answer then for this derivative, I would multiply the 3 and the 4 to simplify this. It would be sine squared of 4t cosine of 4t. Okay, so you actually have chain chain going on here.